Hi, so in a previous video we made this axle wind turbine, that can be horizontal or vertical, and I got lots of really good comments on about how to improve this, and that set me off looking at stuff, obviously, and I came across a Spanish, uh, Spanish company called Vortex Turbineless Limited. I started in 2012, they've won tons of awards, including a massive grant in 2017, and they're beginning to put their design of uh, wind turbine up into tests. And the really cool thing about it is, is it works in extremely low wind without mechanical moving parts. And uh, it captured my imagination, I have to admit. Now, there wasn't a lot of information about it, because you get about half a dozen patents, but it said basically what they do is they use a um, low wind to vibrate a pole, and that pole vibration they turn into electrical energy. And I thought, oh, OK, well, if we think about this, which is a speaker, of course, what that does is take electrical energy in and then vibrate this cone, and this cone vibration we hear as sound. And if what we do is reverse that, that is vibrate the cone, the coil in here will move in and out the magnet and vibrate and create electrical energy. So I thought, okay, these guys, they're doing exactly that or something similar. They're taking what is essentially a speaker and vibrating the cone. And I thought, okay, what's a good way to do that? So I chopped out the cone <laughs> and I glued on a stick onto the coil. So now that wobbling of that stick will move the coil in and out of the field. So let's take this outside and have a look at it working. It's my stick stuck onto my uh, speaker. Speaker's a magnet, obviously, so I stuck it on a magnetic pole. Now, there's just about no wind today. Yesterday we had a little bit of wind, but this thing is, in fact, wobbling. And it's wobbling in the lightest of breezes. Now, at the moment, it's generating about 6.1 volts. When it gets a bit more, it actually goes up to 12 to 18 volts. I mean, obviously, the amps here is tiny in this little setup, but it is possible to make this generate some significant ampage, as the Spanish company is showing. But that, I thought, was super cool because it's a really easy thing to do and experiment with. Anyway, let's go have a close-up look at that. So here it is in close-up, and you can see all I've done is cut out the paper cone, reveal the coil on the inside, and then stick that stick on with a bit of super glue onto the top of the coil. That's all I've done. And then connected the voltmeter to this. As you said, the lightest of breezes, that thing wobbles, and obviously the coil then moves in and out of that magnetic field, and what we have is a linear alternator. OK, so a speaker into a generator using wind. That's pretty cool. But it is pretty chunky and it didn't give out much power. So what we need, I think, is something that's much cheaper, much smaller. And even though it doesn't give out much power, we'll be able to do an awful lot of them so that overall we get a lot of power. And I think that's what the Spanish company are doing. But years ago, I came across something called the sound book. I was interested in speakers uh, and this was a way of turning any surface into a speaker. What it was, was an inductor wrapped with a coil, piece of rubber on top of the inductor, and then a big old magnet. You put a current into the coil, and it changed the magnetic field, which made the magnet bounce up and down on the rubber. Then you could glue that magnet to any surface. I glued it to my window, a desktop, a tin can, a book, a whole, whole load of things. Uh, and in fact, a reed as well. And it turned all of that stuff into a speaker, because that massive moving magnet Bouncing on that rubber made the reed or the window vibrate in time with the signal. And it was a music signal, so we got music out of the window out, or music out of the reed. And as I was looking at this, I thought, hang on a sec, a speaker works? Would the sound bug work? So I got myself a bit of Venetian blind, it's a plastic Venetian blind, and just cut a section out of it, and there's the section I cut out of it. And onto that, I glued a magnet, as you can see. I'll give you a close-up in a second. Then I put a bit of rubber, and then I put an inductor. So what we've got now is a reed that will vibrate in the wind. And that's quite a large reed, obviously. It doesn't need to be that big. It's just a bit of Venetian blind. But let's go and give that a go. Okay, here I've got my little inductor connected up. We hold that there and let that wobble in the wind. <laughs> it actually works. That's ridiculous. <laughs> So here is a close-up of that arrangement. There's the inductor with its coil and its ferrite core. We've got a little bit of rubber right there that I cut from a sheet of neoprene rubber. Then underneath the rubber, 
we've got a neodymium magnet glued onto this piece of Venetian blind. So that's what it looks like, because that is just a sound bug glued onto a reed. So personally, I thought that was awesome. I mean, these are just random choices I've made. Clearly, the resonance is uh, one of the things you're interested in. So that length of reed is going to have an effect, as is the material, because here we used a bit of wood. It's quite long. I imagine we could make that much, much shorter. And also a taper to it might help to get that vibration going on. And same thing with this. Now what we're using here is the inertial difference between the mass of the reed and the mass of the inductor here that's creating that bounce in the rubber. And that bounce in the rubber is where the fixed magnetic field is moving nearer and further away, creating a varying magnetic field. So it might be an idea to hold the inductor in place and put a clip here so that the reed is the only thing that can move. That might be a really good way. And again, the resonance of the reed. But I can see that being mass produced in like a mat. And that mat, you would go onto your roof and would be a wind version of solar. Now, I believe that's the plan of the Spanish company. But it looks like it's a really easy thing to replicate and have a play around with if you're using inductors and magnets or if you're using speakers. You can get speakers in any size. There's tons of these tiny, tiny speakers you'll find in old phones and computers. Anyway, I thought that was super interesting, a really easy thing to experiment with. It could be turned into a very useful product, so I couldn't resist sharing it with you. I hope you found it interesting, and thank you very much for watching the video.